Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Although we have enjoyed some sweet, sweet, clear weather these last couple days, the smoke is starting to roll in. Yesterday it was a little hazy. Today it's going to get hazier. Tomorrow's going to even get hazier. But hopefully by Sunday we're going to get some of those rains and showers happening to help improve some of the smoke that's in the area. So let's take a look at the weather, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of the air quality. So today you have a high of. 80 degrees, you're going to have areas of smoke and haze. It's going to be patchy smoke tonight. Saturday, you're going to have more of the same. Uh, Sunday, you can expect uh, some of those things to start changing, but when you have a, that slight chance of thunderstorms happening, then by Sunday night, you have a 50% chance of so showers moving into Monday. We might have another one of those Mondays where it's going to rain. But expect those uh, 90 degree temperatures to be long gone because it looks like uh, 80s and 70s. It's going to be dancing around 70s in the 80s for the next couple weeks until things start dipping into the fall weather. So let's take a look at uh, the Montana DEQ, Devar uh, Department of Environmental Quality. They release um, kind of like a map of some of the uh, smoke and uh, talks about the particulate matter. So let's take a look at the uh, interactive map, uh, courtesy of the Montana DEQ. So if you look at the uh, at the at the map right here, um, I will show you guys the fire map as well. But if you see up in the north, you can see some of these hazardous conditions for people. Um, not necessarily hazardous, it's unhealthy, just generally unhealthy. Orange is consistent of unhealthy for sensitive groups. So if you take a look at the list, um, most of the northern west northwestern Montana areas are unhealthy to uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups. So you may want to um, limit your exposure to outdoors. Um, let's talk about some of the fire. We're, we're, it's time for a little bit of fire watch. Um, you go to the uh, a, a good place to go is in Cineweb. Um, gov and it brings you to this nice little interactive map and it kind of shows you all the fires that are happening in and around the area it seems like a lot of fires up here in the north and i got good news the howard fire is at 10 percent containment um 10, 000, uh, around 10,000 acres are burning currently so they're at 10 percent containment and they're expected to move up into more containment as the time goes on and hopefully that rain that will come on uh, sunday monday will help with the hot shots and their um, containment of the fire, of the Howe Ridge fire. All right, so let's talk about some news that's happening here and around town. Um, Bonner Milltown has been, uh, so, uh, okay, let me give you a little bit of background. So uh, Bonner Milltown, um, there was an organization that started cryptocurrency to do some data mining for the Bitcoin, and uh, they, you, uh, r uh, basically are renting a facility, they're leasing a facility out of the old Bonner Mill site. Um, unfortunately, the fans that provide the co uh, cooling mechanism for a lot of the servers and computers that they, they need to data mine uh, cause a, a, loud, a loud hum. So for the last like year plus, uh, uh, people in the area, um, owners, uh, Steve, uh, let's see, let's see here, um, the owner of the site and also working with a couple people from Project Spokane and Big Side Acoustics replaced the metal fans on the roof where it was producing most of the sound with a kind of like a graphite type fan, which uh, they were able to reduce the sound uh, for the residents. And many of the residents are um, in agreement that this is a lot better than it was a long time ago, um, but a lot of them consist, uh, consider this uh, basically a neighbor with a... Uh, air conditioning fan going all night. So that's uh, a, quite a big improvement based on the loud hum that Bonner residents were used to uh, just last year. Um, in state news, uh, don't miss the bison. Um, Oregon man uh, gets 130 days in prison for harassing a bison on the Yellowstone National Park. The man who was caught on video following and baiting a bison to charge him at, uh, um, pleaded guilty to mis d misconduct in two national parks. So don't mess with the bison, because even if you don't uh, get hurt from the bison, that doesn't mean you can't get in trouble for messing with the wildlife in the national parks. In national news, um, here's something that has uh, been the ultimate staring contest. China and U.S. are putting fresh tariffs on trade now. So last month, the U.S. leveled uh, tariffs at $34 billion of Chinese imports and after China re, uh, retaliated in kind. Beijing described the escalating trans-Pacific antagonism as the largest trade war in economic history. The tariff stated that the intellectual property is being stolen from the U.S. and used to make money in China. Last uh, Late last month, President Trump, he is 
ready to go to 500, which is basically um, to uh, put a tariff on $500 billion worth of goods, which is basically all the export money that comes from China. So some U.S. manufacturers have said that the business have already been affected by tariffs on products such as steel and aluminum, and consumers may start to feel more of a pinch if companies pass along those costs. All right, so tra trade negotiations are coming up, but both U.S. and Chinese officials think that it won't really go anywhere. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the news. Uh, so let's uh, kick things off with a couple new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. So here, um, the City Band uh, is going to be starting up on airing on MCAT Channel 189, so you can always look up the City Band. We're going to kick things off with a bunch of music uh, for your Friday's episode, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about a couple movies that are coming out. So stay with me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out uh, today, this weekend, and more. So it's kicking off with a little bit of pre-critic where I judge a movie based on absolutely nothing on at all. Maybe the title, maybe a little bit of the synopsis, but here we go. So uh, I'm sure you probably heard all sorts of things happen about this. It's kind of like a uh, sausage party, but with puppets. Just just like imagine a movie where just like, hey, what if we uh, make uh, something that's supposed to be for kids? Raunchy, right? <laughs> But then you get this. You got uh, a show called The Happy Time Murders, directed by Jim Henson's son, uh, comes an adult puppet movie. Basically, imagine hot fuzz minus the hot and double the fuzz because they're puppets and the fuzz. That's a terrible joke. Anyways, the um, puppets are full of fuzz, like the material called fuzz. Um, okay, so 
you just think about it because as soon as Sesame Street moved to HBO, hey, why not make um, a HBO type esque uh, puppet movie? Why not? So, anyways, The Happy Time Murders, starring uh, the human Melissa McCarthy as a wisecracking cop again, who is paired up with a wisecracking PI who is a puppet to investigate a puppet murder. Um, but you will ignore the plot for probably weird fantasies, puppet stuff. It's it's gonna be really weird because um, even. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with that. Anyways, the guy who directed this movie also directed A Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island. So, yeah, like Tim Curry and Michael Caine. And now we have Melissa McCartney with uh, a puppet. So that's kind of what you can expect for those movies. I, I, I'm i pretty sure it's just like... Uh, it's like one of those movies where it just kind of like... You, you don't really... You kind of ignore the plot for the fact that there's just so much other stuff going on that it's so distracting. Anyways, moving on. Imagine a boy and his dog again, um, but the dog is an insert here. And Hollywood basically just says, why don't you just make it a robot? Because, you know, um, Monster Truck has already done a monster, so why not do um, a robot? So basically, last week we had Alpha, which is the first dog, and this one is basically about the future of dog. So anyways, uh, I already imagined how this movie is going to be. So... With any robot, uh, boy in his robot movie, there's always the government trying to steal the robot from the kid, but then the robot kind of sacrifices itself to save the kid or save humanity or something like that, and proving that the robot has more humanity than the robot, than um, humans. So that's kind of what you can expect from this movie because it happens all the time. Up next, we get yet another one of those popular movies where, um, hey, if you're staring at your phone anyways, you might as well just stare at this movie because it's basically a guy FaceTiming throughout the whole entire movie, um, talking to people and finding out what happened to his missing daughter. And the movie's called Searching. It's one of those movies where it's just like one actor, you follow the, throughout the whole entire movie, and something happens, and then, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a mystery movie. So, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I know what to expect from it, but uh, it's uh, it's pretty clear that it's going to have something to do with uh, a father trying to find out what happened to his daughter, what he thinks happened. He's like, wait a minute, that's not right. Oh, no. Oh, crap. I was like, okay, now I, I have this little thing. I was like, oh, it was a false alarm, and it's going to do this a bunch of times and to the point where he has to confront the forces that took his daughter and... There's a confrontation. Maybe he finds out what happened to his daughter. Maybe it's ambiguous and he dies at the end. It really depends upon how independent this film is. Because if depending upon what scale of independent it is, they usually just kind of throw out the third plot altogether and be like, he died too. Anyways, um, yeah. Those are your movies. <laughs> All right, so uh, speaking of short movies, school's happening all next week, and I uh, did a, um, I'm going to show you guys a summer series video made by uh, some of the kids who will be starting school next week. So this is uh, from our Time Travelers Cap at Fort Missoula, and they did a nice little short documentary about Firewatch. So when I come back, I'll talk about all the city council stuff because it gets pretty heated in the budget committee meeting, and I'll talk about more about that when I come back. In 1983, Slide Rock Lookout was brought to Fort Missoula. Today, we look at what it was like to live in the tower and the hardships that came with it. We interview a fireman living in the tower to get a greater inside look. I'm up here almost the entire day. Uh, 23 hours on an average day I'm sitting up here in the tower. Uh, sometimes I go and explore outside a little bit more, but most of the day I'm up here. Uh, daily routine up here is pretty pretty standard. I uh, wake up every morning right when the sun hits the windows. It's pretty bright up here. So wake up in the morning. Uh, typically make a make a little food. I have some uh, some canned meats that I throw on the on the stove over there. Then at some point every day I have to go walk about a mile and a half to the to the nearest river so I can grab a little bit of water. Uh, because there's certainly no water up here. Then I just come up here and typically I read a book out there, uh, just set up set up a chair and look out and just enjoy the view every day till, till dinner.
gets pretty hot up here some days. It also gets pretty cold. I, we're on top of the mountain, so the highs are pretty high when the sun starts beating down. It's like a fishbowl in here. And so the sun all comes in, and just like this place can get bacon in the middle of the day, especially on top of the mountain with no tree cover. But at night, the temperature gets down real way lower, so... Uh, for most of the day, it's pretty cool up here, but during the heat of the heat of the midday, it can get pretty warm. But if you just go sit out on the uh, on the patio out there on the deck, it's much more comfortable. say about three liters of water is what I get. It is really hard. I typically try and go down every day or at least every other day to get some water because if you've never carried water in the woods, it isn't super easy. So I have to go get water about every day, every other day if uh, at the most two days is the longest I'll go without going to get some water because it's heavier than you think it's going to be. So if I if I uh, if I go down to the creek every day, then I don't have to carry too much out. But if I if I go much longer than two days, then I end up carrying a ton of water, and that's just challenging. Yeah, at the beginning of summer, I typically bring up as much food as I can. Uh, brought it up on a mule this year, and I had to carry. I I store up here uh, enough food for about six weeks, but typically. Uh, about halfway through the summer I get a drop off so after about a month I get a drop off of some food and then I don't have to uh, that, that just just some resupply about halfway through the summer so there's a lot of food up here that we have to store Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council. So we're kicking things off with a little bit of public safety and health, and they're talking about the IRC, which stands for the International uh, Committee uh, of. Um, let me see. Sorry, it's the um, it's the International Refugee Resettlement in Missoula. Um, it, it's actually the International Rescue Committee. Sorry about that. So we have a presentation from uh, Jen Borelli, who is with International Rescue Community, and this is, uh, we'll kick things off with uh, what she has to say. IRC is, as you know, the Refugee Resettlement Agency here in Missoula. We contract with the State Department to provide services for, for refugee families that are arriving here. Um, and we actually were... Uh, started at the request of Albert Einstein, who um, back in the back in the early 30s, um, and uh, as some of you may know, Albert Einstein was uh, fleeing Nazi Germany like other scientists at the time, um, and that's how the IRC got started. And many of you probably already know that the International Rescue Committee was the refugee resettlement agency that was in Missoula in the late 70s to early 90s, resettling uh, mostly Hmong refugees. All right, so. Um uh, the, the whole idea of the refugee uh, um, committee is to help resettle people, of course. You probably heard it from her yourself. Um, Vietnam War happened, and uh, a lot of the supporters of America was being targeted by their own countrymen in Vietnam. So America deci decided to say, hey, you can come here, um, and that's what happened. Back in the 70s, there was a lot of re, uh, uh, people coming in to Missoula, and that's when the Missoula chapter of the International Rescue Community really started. Um, but of course, you know, a little history trivia. Uh, here's a little interesting little history church uh, because uh, the International Rescue Community is a nonprofit, and uh, during the Nixon administration, a lot of nonprofits uh, were. Um, Created because the 5013C files and all that stuff was because through the Nixon administration. So, Richard Nixon. Uh, 61 million people in the world have no home go to currently. 21 million are refugees that have a place 
but to them, it's not home. Of course, Jen, Jen um, Borelli gives an example how countries are struggling to help refugees. If we had to flee Montana and, and flee into Canada today, um, most of us would hope that things would become safe at home and we'd be able to return. So when that isn't an option, the second option is local inter integration into that country that folks are fleeing to. So for example, if you're an Eritrean that walked across the border into Ethiopia, uh, in an ideal situation, Ethiopia would be able to absorb folks fleeing into their country. Um, at, and you know, be able to allow hundreds of thousands of people to find jobs and work. But that, a lot of times, that's not possible. The majority of the countries in the world right now that are assisting refugees are countries that really don't have the infrastructure or economies to support tens or hundreds of thousands of refugees. So really, the United States is taking a very tiny portion. As you know, this year, uh, the administration set the, the refugee ceiling at 45,000 refugees to enter the U.S. in fiscal year 18. Um, but we look at countries like Jordan that are, have, you know, and Turkey and Ethiopia that are taking tens or hundreds of thousands of refugees each year um, to help people be, be safe. So that Okay, so America, just so you guys know, we are represented as a third country resettlement. So a lot of times when um, people have to flee their countries in a war-torn civil war. So, for example, Syria, people have to leave Syria, and usually the closest country they usually have been going to is Germany, the neighboring countries, Turkey, and some of those places as well. So a lot of times when they start filling up, a lot of those international communities be like, there's too many people for us to have, so is there any other country that can do that? So America has become pretty well known to be a third country resettlement or maybe even fourth country um, in terms of that. And like she said, only uh, X amount of people are allowed in our country, which is about 45,000 people. So it's, 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 it's quite a little a small sum to give people refugees. And for a lot of parts, uh, the mindset of a lot of refugees is that they want to go home, but they just can't. Okay, so the U.S. is fighting a two-sided battle, and I will uh, just kind of like kind of get the idea of it's like we we want to protect our borders, but at the same time, um, um, we, which also makes things like refugees a second thought, if at all. Um, if U.S. doesn't take direct refugees, but as a third-party station, basically when a country gets refugees from neighboring countries, they have to pass the buck because they can't provide jobs and services for everyone. The IRC has done a lot to support people with programs in Missoula with education partnerships with community efforts and getting people acclimated to the city. Lifelong Learning Center is helping with English lessons for a lot of kids who are being, um, because we're taking a lot of families, so a lot of the issues is that a lot of kids don't actually speak English, so there has to be a tutor um, that they have to figure out how they get a tutor going on there, so there's just a lot of moving parts, and uh, there's only so many services available for X amount of people to come just to Missoula alone, even though that we, uh, Missoula has become the kind of place where um, it, within the city council have uh, basically declared Missoula as a sanctuary city. All right, so let's move on. I don't want to get too much into it, but if you can, you can watch the whole meeting as well. That was just an excerpt of the meeting. You can learn more about the International Rescue Committee by going on to the Public Safety and Health at the City of Missoula's website. Budget Committee meeting, that's the big thing that's happening. Mayor John Engen reflects on Tuesday, uh, on Tuesday's decision to reallocate MRA funds to the general fund. So this is what uh, Mayor John Engen had to say. I think if you look at the long-term uh, tax, property tax increases over the course of the last 10 years, 3% is in the ballpark. Um, doesn't mean it's terrific. Uh, again, if I had my druthers, we'd, we'd be lowering taxes. But the fact of the matter is that our circumstances don't match need and desire and responsibility and revenue don't align. And when they don't, we figure out ways to do that responsibly. This budget, I hope, does that. And MRA, um, through TIF, has been enormously helpful this cycle. My hope is that we don't have to do this again, because I actually agree with, uh, uh, I, I shouldn't say actually, I do agree with Ms. Harp. Um, TIF remittance is expensive money. 
the opportunity cost there is considerable. This is not something that we ought to do lightly, willy-nilly, or regularly because we are simply um, we're, we're limiting our ability to further invest in the infrastructure that's helping the city grow and maintain a quality of life. All right, so that was Mayor John Ingen talking a little bit, reflecting about how the money that we're using is to improve the city of Missoula. Here's a public comment by um, um, Roy Anderson, and uh, he, he, uh, yeah, I'm just going to let him say what he had to say. I have enough money, hopefully, to last me for the rest of my life, provided you don't keep on raising property taxes. You need to have a budget and stick to it. You know, I'd like a Thank new you, Cadillac. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Point of order. I'd like Point a new Mr. Cadillac. Anderson. Point of I order. Think we're done. I would like Thank a new you. Point of order. Every year, too. You Point of order has order. been called, and Mr. Anderson, and so you thank you for stop, your comments. You need to stop rubber stamping thank you. these spending. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Anderson. We've got a lot to get to today. So, uh, for City Council, if all I right. So that was kind of uh, uh, the public comment that happened during the meeting. Um, things got a little more heated as soon as uh, Jesse Ramos uh, suggested uh, that the city cut about uh, one point. Six million dollars worth of uh, budget, which include parks department, aquatics, um, arts, Missoula, just a bunch of things um, uh, with a mill levy, including uh, the uh, the a hundred thousand dollars that we give to Mountain Line for the fare free fare free bus travel. Um, he's saying that a lot of these uh, organizations can support themselves by now, and they don't need uh, to get money uh, from the city of Missoula. So Jesse Armas talks a little bit more about some of these programs, like Arts Missoula. He is interrupted in the middle of it uh, from a point of order by Heather Harp. I, I think the work that they're doing is fantastic. Uh, Arts Missoula, I think that uh, it's great that somebody in town is doing that. But again, I think that uh, they, they raise a large majority of their budget uh, from the private sector anyways through individual voluntary contributions. And I would like to see us uh, focus more on allowing them to do that as opposed to once again holding people at gunpoint and taking their tax dollars to pay for something like this. Point of order. <laughs> In this culture, I just do not appreciate the continued gun reference. I understand what the point you're trying to make, but I take offense to that. And I would appreciate if you would find another analogy, but into continuing to incite gun violence in a public meeting like this is not appreciated. All right, so that's uh, there's a lot of back and forth with this. Um, uh, Jesse Ramos uh, put it in a motion and uh, an amended motion in order to uh, uh, basically add this with the um, the overall budget for budget cuts. Um, of course, there was a lot of 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 course. Um, okay, so there was uh, basically uh, Jesse Ramos wanted to kind of overhaul overhaul the budget altogether to kind of help offset some of the charges uh, uh, that were made, and he and he has kind of been the big biggest critic to uh, Missoula's uh, spending. So according to Dale Bickle, this proposal would cut budgets by $1.3 million. Uh, Julie Merritt um, talks about parks and the impact on Montana youth, on Missoula youth particularly. Our schools from preschool through the university take advantage of programs offered by Parks and Rec, including the aquatics facilities. Uh, children in these programs have the opportunity to swim, rock climb, uh, use, learn how to use a GPS unit, play soccer, all manner of uh, activities. And these programs aren't just available to kids whose parents can afford to pay $200 plus a week to attend a summer camp. They're available to everyone in our community. Um, and as Donna said, the, the growth in the use of those programs has um, really increased in recent years, and I'm, for one, am so happy to see that. Um, you know, in my opinion, that's one of the best things that a local government can do is to provide healthy, supportive environments for our young people. Kids who have opportunities like this and role models like the great um, staff members at Parks and Rec are far less likely to start using drugs or alcohol at a young age, and consequently they're way less likely to get in trouble with the law. Just a couple of studies. Um, All right, so I'm going to cut her off right there. Um, let's move on to the next quote. Uh, we got Gwen Jones, and he talks about keeping most of these programs um, as well. 
it's crucial having a lobbyist. Otherwise, we are not even in the game. Um, and we, as a body, decide the policies that we want to direct our lobbyists to handle. So that's the way that works. It's a crucial ingredient. Um, being part of League of Cities and Towns is uh, also, highly educational. There will be a uh, summit this fall that most of us will attend, and they provide many services and resources to our city on a regular basis. Finally, the economic partnership is really our only tool to actively woo businesses to come here. And if you've read the news in the last year, frankly, some of the tech companies that are coming here, the MEP has been... Uh, uh, very crucial in that role of wooing these tech companies to come here. So for a city of our size to not have something like this, we would be remiss. And there is a lot of private participation, and this is our new norm. We have public-private partnerships. That's how you make things work. So I think those are totally reasonable. At this point... All right, so that was Gwen Jones talking about how uh, the city of Missoula has changed and how it's uh, changed for the better. So uh, John Debari, he talks about uh, programs as well. I think maybe the thing that was a little bit lost sight of is that the cuts that he's proposing dis disproportionately affect a certain segment of the population. And um, as I've mentioned in the past, you know, I can go through the budget and I can identify a, a host of items in there that I personally can do without. But what I've learned from uh, my service here is that it, it's not about me. There is a constituency for all of this in our community, and uh, you heard from a lot of them today, and I'm sure you'll hear from uh, them in, in the future as well. So um, I think uh, based on what I've seen so far, I am not going to support Mr. Ramos's motion and uh, just move forward from there. All right. So uh, uh, frankly, the uh, budget is not going to change. Um, they're going to be putting it up to a public hearing on Monday, August 27th. You guys, I suggest you watch the whole meeting. Uh, there's a lot of interesting points that are made on both sides, uh, both Jesse Ramos and the city council and public comment during the meeting. I gave you kind of a flyover of what you guys can see from the budget committee, but you can watch the budget committee by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, guys, let's move on. Um, I got a Art clip for you guys. Uh, this is an art clip from the Clay Studio of Missoula. Uh, so when I come back, I'm going to talk about events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, including the, uh, your guide to the River City Roots Festival. So stay with me. Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Kicking things off for your uh, Friday. Hey, you got all those indoor sports arena type deals if you want to uh, uh, avoid your kids having some kind of smoke inhalation. Mismo. Misa, uh, in Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, and Roots Acro Sports Center is all the places to go for uh, your kids this morning until about noon. They might have a couple afternoon things going on there as well, so you might want to check that out. Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library. Hey, get your kids exposed to books. It's a free service that is provided for you and your kids, and it's a good way to uh, get your kids uh, 
uh, to learn to read. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Center. Hey, if you are done with the books, starting at 11 a.m., Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a slime and oobleck, um, which is at the Spectrum Discovery Center off Tool Street. Kids Table at the Library. Hey, if you want a free lunch for your kids, if you're 18 and under or you're with a group, you guys can get a free lunch at the Kids Table at the Library. It goes and helps promote the Missoula uh, city food, the Missoula Food Bank, sorry about that, um, the Missoula Public Library hosts Kids Table, which runs every weekday all the way until today. Today is the last day to do it and offers kids and their caregivers a free lunch with act an activity, and it goes from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the library's large meeting room. River City Roots Festival. Hey, it's time for the River City Roots Festival to hop in on Friday and Saturday, and this is the weekend where all those college kids are going to start moving in, so this is a good excuse for anybody who's in college and just coming to Missoula, those wacky freshmen who would rather just stay in their dorm all day. Hey, why not just uh, check out? It's free and open to the public. Um, this is a... Um, a whole list of different kinds of things. You have from 12 noon to about 2 p.m. You got Missoula Area Kid Bands um, from 2.30 to 4 p.m. Good Old Fashioned, uh, Laney Lou and the Bird Dogs, uh, Nathan Williams and Zydeco Cha-Chas. And then uh, wrapping up your, fr uh, your Friday night for River City Roots Festival is the New Orleans Suspects. All right, so let's talk about the website. You can go to the RiverCityRootsFestival.com. You see this nice little video um, just kind of playing in the loop, and it kind of shows you a glimpse of what you guys can see. Uh, some places that Karis Park. It's going to be at the Hip Strip, which is on Ryman and um, Main Street. So Ryman and Main Street. You can't miss it. You just have to go downtown, l l listen for the loud music and noise, and you can just follow that all the way to the River City Roots Festival. It's free admission, but of course you got to pay to eat, pay for all the knickknacks if you want to buy anything. But for the most part, you don't have to pay to go to this event. All right. Let's move on to some other events that are happening. So if you're around town and you want to do uh, other things, uh, starting at 5 p.m. is the Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce. They're doing a do-it-yourself flower crown workshop. For all you flower childs, um, it's, uh, you'll learn how to make a unique crown using fresh local flowers located at the banks of the Clark Fork River next to the UM Footbridge. The workshop finishes up just in time to stroll down the river trail to the River City Ridge Festival where you can Rock the night away with your gorgeous flower crown. It's $25 in advance or $30 at the door, and it's going to be at the Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce, starting at 5. Of course, the musical about a musical about a musical is playing at Downtown Dance Collective tonight at 7.30 p.m. Only you get two nights to check it out tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective. And the show is called Title of Show. All right, so let's uh, click on over to your late night events. Um, if you guys are kind of in the Roots Festival and you might want to migrate to any of the local places here in town, Union Club has Idle Ranch Hands starting at 9.30 p.m. Uh, Sunrise Saloon, which is a little further away if you really want to get away. VFW has Camp Days, um, which is uh, rock music, and it's going to be at the VFW. And, uh, and it's, uh, Camp Days is like a mixed bag of a bunch of musicians coming from out of town, so it's a nice way. And it's basically right behind the grandstand of uh, the River City Roots Festival. Letter B is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be a funk band, so you can check all that out um, and more. So I have another art clip for you guys, and I'm going to talk about Saturday events right after this. So, um, hey, if you guys want to go to the MAM, you only have until September 16th to check out this art. So when I come back, we're talking about Saturday events. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening Saturday. Farmer's Market still going on. It's going on strong. Starting at 8 a.m. Saturday morning from uh, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. You guys can enjoy some local produce, meats, uh, knickknacks, and all sorts of fun things that are made locally here in Missoula and grown locally as well. Uh, River City Roost Fest uh, four mile run. Um, hey, if you guys are planning on doing a run, uh, they have a four mile run, which um, if you do that, you get rewarded with a... Um, a cup, a plastic cup that allows and gives you two tickets for alcohol at the River City Roots Festival. Uh, participants must be 21 up to receive the drink cup, wristband, and drink ticket to be used at the festival. Hungary Tarantula Game is happening at the Missoula Insectarium. Tur join the Missoula Insectarium to hunt down prey like a tarantula. They'll be learning all about these sit and wait predators and how they sense the world around them while we play interactive game great for all ages. And also, if you stick around a little bit longer at the Missoula Insectarium, they'll do a predator feeding where you get to see an, one of their insects or anthropods eat some insects um, or anthropods. I don't know. Uh, River City Roost Festival continues on Saturday starting at 12.30 to 2 p.m. The Salamanders, which is a kid band, will be kicking off the River City Roost Festival. Rip Rapid Grass will be playing from 2.30 to 4. 4.30 to 6. Uh, John Stickley Trio. Um, 6.30 to 8. You got Billy Strings. And then, of course, wrapping up the River City Roost Festival from 8.30 to 10.30, maybe a little bit longer depending, is the infamous String Dusters. Of course, MCAT will be at Karis Park on Saturday from about 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. for the kids portion of the festival that's hosted at Karis Park. Um, if you guys get it, want a little glimpse, there's a bunch of pictures of the event as well. So they'll have all sorts of things, which will uh, will have VR. Well, they'll have uh, karate probably demonstrations. They have all sorts of fun kid activities. Uh, also, Spectrum will most likely be there, usually when there's a festival with kids. Spectrum does show up. Just a bunch of fun uh, running activities. Just a nice little mixed bag of all sorts of fun. Uh, fun, 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 fun. I'll just say fun over and over again until it gets old. Anyways, hey, let's talk about some other things that are happening on your Friday night. Cold Hard Cash Show is uh, playing, so it is a Johnny Cash cover band that appeared on David Letterman. They will be playing at the Wilma Theater. A lot of times they do play at the Sunrise Saloon, but it seems like their popularity is following them around, and you can check them out at the Wilma. Tickets, I believe, are available at the uh, logjampresents.com. So um, if you are interested in anything else happening Saturday night, we I will law, I will go over to the Missoula events calendar and to see what it's all about. You got some DJ music at the Badlander. You got... Um, Mickey Altili Band at the Sunrise Saloon. They play tonight as well. Um, the Shiver will be at the Union Club. Fate's Fortune will be at the VFW. And Inatsuki will be at uh, Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be a jam band. So those are some of your events that are happening there as well. But before I end uh, with your weekend events, there's a couple of Sunday events uh, that I want to talk about. Um, just so you guys know, they're auditioning Sister Act, the musical. So Missoula Community Theater is kicking off their season with their first auditions for their first play, which is Sister Act, the musical. So auditions start around 12, and they go until about 5. And if you get callbacks, you might have to go late into the night. So Sunday, Missoula Community Theater kicks off with auditions for Sister Act, the musical. Sister Act, the musical about nuns. So it makes you want to go whoopee, right? Of course, anybody who remembers the 90s would kind of know that joke. Anyways, what am I going to say? I don't know what else. Uh, if you want more information about what's happening in the Missoula area, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? Go here. This is what's going on in Missoula. But if you want to learn more about what's happening in your city in terms of government, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You can go to MCAT.org to find all your local MCAT-related Missoula videos. MCAT will be live streaming uh, today um, for the State of the University address. Um, so that will be starting at around 11 a.m. today. Um, it will be live streaming on our MCAT.org page. All you got to go to is local live. And it'll bring you to a page where you click on the video and you can watch the state of the university. There's going to be an, a, an ALS translator. Um, ACL, sorry about that. Oof. Um, ALC, oh God, I'm, I'm, I can't think of it right now. But anyways, well, there'll be a, a 
sign language person there to help uh, sign for people who uh, who can't hear. So it'll be a, a, a fun experience and you get to learn what's happening within the University of Montana system since they are letting go the Dean of Students. So maybe they'll talk a little bit about that. Um, also tonight, um, MCAT hopefully will be live streaming a sports game. We're kicking off with the football season between Seno High School, which is why I'm wearing my purple, um, uh, going against uh, Billings Skyview. So we'll be playing those guys tonight starting at 7 p.m. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some uh, good commentation. Um, if I'm doing it, we probably won't, so you have to bear with me. So um, I guess that's kind of it. I do want to mention that Saturday drop-ins are coming up again. So two weeks from tomorrow, we're going to have Saturday drop-ins starting on September the 8th. So September 8th is when we're going to start Saturday drop-ins once again, and it'll be happening from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday, except for maybe a couple holiday weekends. But pretty much we're going to be happening from September 8th all the way until like May 25th, late, you know, Memorial Day weekend. So we'll have all that and more. But I'll have a couple guests coming on. Um, so we'll have Susan Campbell Renault on next week to talk about the 9-11 memorial uh, services that will be taking place in Missoula. So I guess that's uh, kind of it for uh, Wake Up Missoula. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. There is a lot to talk about. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I totally butchered city council. Uh, it's It was not a good morning for city council. So um, I'll do better next week. So Monday, just to remind you once again, they're going to finalize the budget for fiscal year 2019. So if you guys want to put your two cents forward, they'll have a public comment for the public hearing, probably an hour or half an hour within the meeting on Monday. So starting at 7 p.m., the city council meets in the city council chambers right next to the Thomas Mar Bar. You can't miss it. It's going to be great. And they're finalizing the budget for your city of Missoula. So I think that'll be great. Um, honestly, I, I'm just kind of holding you hostage if you're still watching this. So without further ado, thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and check us out tomorrow at Karis Park from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm.